One of the treatment goals is to prevent the heart from beating too fast. This rate control can help reduce your symptoms. This usually can be accomplished with medications like beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. Rhythm control is a related but different treatment approach that allows the heart's chambers to work together to efficiently pump blood. Your healthcare professional will let you know whether you might benefit from rhythm control. If so, procedures may be necessary and include electrical cardioversion, where a controlled shock to the chest restores the normal rhythm. Catheter ablation, where radio frequency, heat, or cryo, cold energy, is used to strategically destroy tissue and prevent the abnormal electrical impulses from spreading. Maze or mini maze surgery is similar to catheter ablation and may also use incisions to interrupt the signals. Another critical part of treating AFib is preventing strokes. Because the heart beats irregularly while in AFib, it affects the way blood flows through the heart and makes it vulnerable for forming clots. Those clots can travel from the heart to the brain where they can block vital blood flow and oxygen, resulting in a stroke that can be debilitating or deadly. The risk of stroke in a person with AFib is 500% higher than in someone without the disease, so treatment to reduce stroke risk is essential. Anticoagulants, also called blood thinners, interfere with the body's clotting mechanisms and reduce the risk of stroke. There are now a number of oral anticoagulants available that work in different ways with different benefits and risks, allowing the healthcare professional and patient to choose the right drug for them. Some individuals may not need an anticoagulant because their risk of stroke is so low or because their risk of bleeding as a side effect of the anticoagulant is too high. However, fatal bleeding while on an anticoagulant is rare, and for most AFib patients, the benefit of preventing AFib-caused strokes outweighs the increased risk of bleeding. In most cases, things like frailty, age, and risk of falls should not be barriers to anticoagulation. Brought to you by the Alliance for Aging Research.